the salmon and the salmon price just because it's interesting mm. because right now it's rocket high. But I think many people, maybe especially 20s, early 30s, don't really know the history of the salmon price. That it mm. hasn't been, you know, this amazing industry all the time. Like there has been some really brutal times uh, before. Yeah. But then now it seems like it has found this way and it seems like an extremely profitable industry and product like what's your bird eyes view on salmon salmon price where it's headed do you care about that at all is it too volatile to really no no well so we tend of course like one of our investment philosophies to tend to invest in companies which are not very dependent on the salmon price but of course if the salmon price is low over time companies will will, will, will restructure their their investment budgets and and you will of course uh we're not that resilient to, to the price of course so we will of course but 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 we, we try to invest in companies which which is not hit by that uh volatile price which has been very volatile historically uh our in philosophy was that we we, we just like when when we sold our investment tests to investors we, we basically said like there's the the growth is capped by licenses the underlying growth for seafood annually is around ten percent, and there's and the new uh, the new farming methods like land based coast at sea offshore will start to develop or is developing, but it will take a lot of years before they produce any volume, which will do anything with the supply demand balance. So we were like, okay, we said like. Dear investors, I will put your money into us and put also uh, uh, money into the into the seafood companies in the in the stock market because we we see a uh, higher uh, salmon price going forward. It's the level which are, it's at now. It's it's way higher than even we predicted, of course. But but it's and probably not sustainable, right? At this price, or I, I I don't think it's sustainable at this this price, but 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 kind of you never know uh, because like in the history of, of of the salmon price, we have seen this kind of shift and then it kind of reestablish on a higher level. So I, I think it will I think it will adjust down yeah. of of course, but but like if you go back just a few years, back to 2018, 19, or or even back to 2016, when when we said like okay, 62 Norwegian per kilo is a very very high price. Like it's not sustainable. It's not sustainable, and then we experience growth in production, um, a little bit growth in production, and then we see oh the price doesn't move, so maybe it is sustainable. And now we see the kind of the same thing happen again, like in next level. Yeah. So so what will happen going forward? They, um, I think it will adjust down, but I think we'll also see like that uh, maybe it will not go back to where it were. If you take prices, of course, one thing, but there's so much, I don't know if hype is the right word, but let's say keen interest on the new technology. You have offshore, mm. you have people saying that it's not sustainable in the fjords, they want to control the sea lice, the escape, etc. What is your current assessment on, is it is it only experiments so far, land-based, offshore? Do you see data that makes you confident in having a prediction in, this is how salmon farming will look in five years because it's a scaling problem, not a tech problem? Yeah, it's I, I I always say it's a tech problem, not a, a scaling, or it's a scaling problem, not a tech problem, because I like there's the technology is out there to do this profitable, but there's it's biology, so and and we have to scale it, and that's a lot of uh, uh, it's a lot of learning before we're able to do this, and when I I saying to do this, do this at the volume, yeah. which will make a difference, because there's no problem to farm fish on land. There's no problem to farm fish in close to that sea or offshore. The problem is to farm a lot of fish, uh, which which kind of supports the investment, and 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 kind of uh, and make that fish or or produce the same fish every time in the same volume without having a lot of setbacks. That that that's the kind of the issue. But this is the same story about the kind of the net pens. If you go back, so it's only only a matter of time, in my view, before we see more volume coming out from alternative production methods and and the salmon the high salmon price then that we see now will 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 fuel investments and and that is what is very interesting for us because all these new farming methods 
also builds up a new supplier industry. Yeah. Because now we're like, like the traditional supplier industry for salmon, it was uh, people producing cages and nets and uh, and a few vessels and a feed barge, right? But now they are much more complex. Now it's ozone, it's oxygen, it's hygiene, is 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 much more complex, um, like artificial intelligence, vision technology, digitalization. There's 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 much much more complex it's uh, uh, systems which which kind of fuel the totally new supplier industry, which makes this a very very attractive investment universe for us. Yeah. And this actually reverts back when we were pitching back in in 2020, because I have a slide where I show the S-curve. You can probably get that slide and put yeah, it in, yeah, in the cast. Yeah, let's There's an S-curve, which we learn at school. And S-curve kind of um, uh, shows and the development of an industry. And I said in my pitch back in 2020 that we are in the beginning uh, of the growth phase. And, I, and then I showed the American uh, semiconductor industry and said like, okay, what, ha- what happens in an industry when an industry is in the early beginnings uh, of the growth phase? And if you, if you look, look at the semiconductor industry in the, in the US, there's a lot of people entering the space and you saw a lot of transactions and consolidation. So basically what you saw was a great environment for for to be an active owner and an active investor. And this is exactly what we're now seeing in the salmon sector too, because we're now in the growth phase, we're looking at new opportunities, new production methods, and and the industry is is, is on, on, on the rise and a lot of new companies want to get in. And there are a lot of companies which have a lot to bring to the table because we're, we're, we're trying to farm at land, we're trying to farm close at sea, we're trying to farm offshore. And there's a, the, the kind of the supply industry is just growing tremendously and gives us a very, very unique position as kind of the, 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 the pure play seafood uh, private equity investor with, with basically a long track record. So I think we are in the, actually in, in the sweet spot of what we said in 2020 will happen. And that's actually, it's happened. And then there's a couple of investors calling us actually uh, saying, like, uh, okay, how is it going? So ah, it's going pretty good. I hope so, because what, what you said did happen. Yeah. So I expect that you did capitalize on, <laughs> on that yeah, strategy. Exactly. Mm. But looking at, if you just take land-based uh, farming, so just giving that there's so much, like ocean is basically the earth, right? So giving all the, all the ocean space. So... Why does it really make sense to do something like that on land? I understand, of course, you want to be close to market, you want to cut down cost and transport, etc. But why do you feel like there is a need to do farming no, on land? Or is that because we have to think about the ocean health. So we have to do we have to farm food more sustainable without um, environmental footprint, and that's. What we have to, and, and, and if you are on land, you can crawl, uh, control a lot of parameters. And and uh, of course, I see a lot of opportunities in the sea too, but we have yep. to do it in the sea without uh, pollution or without any effect. I wouldn't say pollution because it's a, it's a discussion of yep. is it pollution or not. No, yep. it's without any effect on the environment. And that's why we introduced the term ocean health. So we have to farm where we consider the fish health and the ocean health at the same time. And if we can kind of balance these two, I believe that there's a, there's a great future for, for salmon farming in the sea, as long as we can also make sure that we don't have any negative effect on the ocean health. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Have you seen the um, the revolution in sort of the, the cell-based seafood farming, where you take the cell and yeah. the protein and try to scale in the lab? Have you watched that? Because uh, it seems like yeah, they're... It's, it, it's, it's happening in all food industries. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it, that's nothing new. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, like I, of course I, I, I'm not very knowledgeable about that. I, I see it's happening. It's, I, I don't know the technology behind it, but there's always a long way to scale something from a lab to a commercial use. Uh, but of course, uh, right now I don't see it as a as a immediate threat. But but of course, in the future, uh, people want to 
But I think it's a, a consumer shift that needs to be happened too. Yeah. But that consumer shift can happen fast if it if it hits. But uh, but doesn't happen fast in food. Isn't food more slow moving, or do you feel like food can have rapid shifts? Like I I think that food. I'm 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 very, very big fan of the kind of Bill Gates quote that you underestimate yeah. the changes that will 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 happen in, or we overestimate the change will happen in three years, but you underestimate the changes that will happen in ten. Mm-hmm. Because like you, you try so hard to make a change and it doesn't happen, but when the change when it comes. It happens really fast. Yeah, and that's uh, that's uh, that's 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 a very very good quote, and that's um, that's something that we've seen across the industry in terms of how they how they take take um, how they use technology, how they absorb new technologies. Like there's been a lot of talk, nothing happens for many many years, but but suddenly like everyone everyone's doing it. So definitely. Hmm.